This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Not Lamal Ultimate, Not Automobilistia 2, but Gran Turismo 7. I wanted to discuss today, like I said, are we actually excited for Lamal Ultimate? To be quite frank, Lama Ultimate on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it these days, has 8,000 followers and has 222 followers on their subreddit. And I have heard very little from the community at large. We're actually even excited for this game, which makes me slightly disappointed because it is for the first time in who knows how long were Imza Weck actually have a dedicated game that you could play with any of the well the LMDH cars and GT3 cars multi-class racing LMP2 cars it makes me very excited for a lot of different things and again, it doesn't seem like the community at large is really discussing much about it. That being said, here are the reasons why I personally am excited for Lama Ultimate. Reason number one why I am excited for Lama Ultimate. A lot of people might not be that excited as I am. But reason number one is actually the developer. Now, Studio 397 has had its ups and its downs, but to be quite frank, they became a household name because of R Factor 2. Now, much like Studio 397, R Factor 2 has had some ups and downs, but it became a household name in sim racing because it was damn good. Now, I can't comment on how it was released or how it was developed over the years. I wasn't paying too much attention to that game, to be quite frank. But it was and still is today a very moddable game, a very open game that you can do a lot with. I think I remember seeing a couple of IndyCar mods going around for it, which made me quite excited to actually pick it up and try it on Steam Deck and whatnot. But R Factor 2, from my understanding, had a pretty decent physics engine, which is good because a lot of it's being carried over. So the reason why a lot of people are kind of skeptical about th Studio 397 being the developer for Lama Ultimate was because of a rather interesting moment. I want to say it was last year's... What was it? It was either last year's Daytona 24 or last year's Le Mans Virtual. Or maybe that was a while ago during COVID. I can't even remember. But I remember it being moved over to R Factor 2 from iRacing. And the servers could not keep up. There are a lot of random disconnects to the random bunch of random bugs to the point where the people were being disconnected mid race after like eight hours. And if you're in an endurance race, you can't have any disconnects whatsoever because you just throw away that time. Can you imagine just racing for eight hours then disconnecting, trying to get back in and then the game's just like, nah, sorry. So my thought process is this. If there is a single player campaign in Lima Ultimate, I am very excited for that. I am deeply concerned, <laughs> however, for the online portion of the game. Because if any of the servers carry over from R Factor 2 in the same shape that it was during the Lama Virtual, yeah, that is a deep, deep problem. Reason number two why I am excited for Lama Ultimate. This one might be kind of a low bar to clear, but it is a bar nonetheless that has been cleared. 
the cars and the tracks. So in the World Endurance Championship, there is all of seven tracks. And all seven have been included. I'm going to fact check that. My research has concluded that yes, that is correct. So of course, there is Sebring, Portimao, Spa, Le Mans itself, Monza, Fuji, and Bahrain. Again, I am excited that all of those are included because in my mind, all of them are pretty decent tracks. I haven't played Portimao before because there really hasn't been a video game that's included Portimao, but Spa is awesome. Fuji is great. Le Mans circuit itself is great. So I am excited to be playing through a bunch of these other courses for the first time. And then we get to the car list. And I'm excited because of this. Yes, not all of the cars have been included, but a good amount of them have been included to the point where it's still going to make the racing very enjoyable. When it comes to kind of this Le Mans content, I will say that, you know, for example, Automobilista 2 had this issue where it's only including some of the cars. So, like, you'll get three of them and it's like well you can't have this amazing fight up front with only two other cars that aren't you so the fact that we have the Cadillac V series R the gorgeous Ferrari 99P which I am super excited that we have it finally officially licensed in a video game then we have the Glickenhaus also a car that I was not really expecting to be here, but it is. So again, I am excited. Then we have the Peugeot 9X8. And I'm excited for this one because it can be permanently revered in Le Mans Ultimate for the fact that it is the only LMDH hypercar to not have a rear wing and to be entirely focused around the ground effect aerodynamics so the fact that we have it preserved in a video game for all future time to tell I am happy about that then we have of course the Porsche 963 then the Toyota GR 010 which we are driving a well that car right now but not the most recent version of it of course and then actually enough, weirdly enough, we have the Vanwell, which also another car that I was not expecting to see, but nonetheless glad to have. Now, the cool thing is, like I was kind of briefly discussing earlier, I want a career mode in Le Mans Ultimate that starts you out with the LMGTE AM class. Then you work your way up to LMP2 and then in like a third season, you work your way up to the LMDH category. I am excited that we have the iconic LMP2 Orca car. And then of course we have only four LMGTE AMs, which would be the Aston Martin Vantage, the Chevrolet Corvette C8R, the Ferrari 488 GTE Evo, and of course the Porsche 911 RSR. So the fact that we have multiple classes confirmed hopefully means that this is a multi-class race, I'd imagine, because if it's not, I think they've missed out on the complete essence of the World Endurance Championship. The next reason why I'm excited for Le Mans Ultimate is weirdly enough, when they posted for on both Twitter and subreddit and whatnot, the minimum system requirements and the recommended system requirements. As an individual who follows Digital Foundry quite closely, listening to them discuss the optimization or rather lack thereof of AAA games being released on PC in 2023 and 2024 has been rather appalling. Where 
The game runs mostly well on console, but as soon as it gets to PC, it is a buggy mess. There's stator compilation stutter. You need a 4090 to be able to run anything because everything is so unoptimized. And then you have these ginormous frame rate swings. And it's just... And the fact that they charge $70 on top of all of that is just absolutely appalling and disgusting. And I hate every bit of it. So you guys would understand my absolute delight when I see that they announce the minimum system requirements is an i5-4460 or an AMD FX-8120 running 8 gigs of RAM with an NVIDIA 950 or a Radeon 470 which is absolutely crazy because it is it either I'm hoping that it's on the good side of things, where it just means that the game is so optimized, where they can hit such a low level of system that you can still run it. You can find like a family PC almost, throw one of the cheapest graphics cards that you can buy on the market today, which I was gonna say I recently bought during COVID uh, was an RX 580 for 200 bucks, but that was COVID pricing. It's back down to like a hundred bucks. I think you could probably buy it secondhand for even cheaper. But I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that it's just that where it's that optimized that you can run it on basically anything. The worry then is the other side of the argument is that it is running R Factor 2 R Factor 2's game engine which means that there's a chance that the graphics just aren't that good in comparison to what AAA titles you would expect in this day and age so I'm deeply afraid that it's just that they're running 10 year old game graphics if they're able to hit those kind of specs that are at least five years old i think it's even longer because those are kind of the specs that my old brothers had worked with when they're building computers their first ones 10 years ago <laughs> so no like i said i'm just really hoping that it's just that well optimized because holy crap if that's the case wow 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 last but not least the final reason why i'm excited for lima ultimate it's kind of a more basic one. The more racing games that get released, the more variety that we have to choose from, and ultimately the more innovation that it breeds. So if you have just one or two game companies that put out one or two racing games, we're kind of waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for another game to come around with nothing to do. Or, you know, you've got all these random ones coming out left, right, and center. I mean, this last year and this year are going to be huge years for the racing community. I mean, yet this year we have uh, a set of Corsa 2. We have Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. We have Ren Sport. Of course, we've got our annual release games, whether it be F121. We've got... Uh, 21 f124 or you know wrc ea's wrc 24 so i'm just excited for all that especially the fact that WEC is finally getting some representation in the video game market which it's been very much so lacking for a long time the most recent WEC car that gran turismo had was from 2017 it's 2024 already so Excited about all that. Oh, no. I'm out of gas, aren't I? Nope. <laughs> Don't cheat, everyone. Don't cheat. You're going to get absolutely murdered if you do. <laughs> so there are a lot of great things coming our way. And I'm hoping that Lamont Ultimate is one of them. As again, we're finally getting a world endurance championship game that's got 
fairly recent cars. It's not the most, most recent ones. Uh, they, I want to say Studio 397 did make mention that they're hopefully eventually going to be releasing patches or DLC that includes more recent seasons. Fingers crossed for that because, man, racing that Alpine, racing that Lamborghini. Oh, oh, that would be really cool. So let me know in the comments section down below what you guys are looking forward to with Lama Ultimate. Maybe you're pretty skeptical given the previous history of Studio 397. Or maybe you're kind of like myself where you're just hopefully optimistic about what is yet to come. So again, leave your comments down below. Like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys not next week, but in two weeks for Lima Ultimate. We'll see you guys next week for some other stuff. But in two weeks, Lima Ultimate, we'll get a video on that soon. So stay tuned. Again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.